This is how I grew my Carter Ant Colony from one single queen to a giant empire of ants in 1000 days, and how they persevere through expansion pains and even cannibalism as they eat each other to control the numbers in the colony. And you won't believe what I discover inside their nest at the end of this video. Welcome to another Antflix video. But first, we have to go back to day one where this all started. A newly carpenter camp node sneaker branches queen arrives with brood and a few workers, which is a great starting point with huge potential. I place them into a heated outworld and leave the test tube open, also known as a tubs and tube setup, which allows for workers to forage for food freely. From here, to grow the colony, I regularly provide them proteins such as mealworms and crickets, which they feed the brood with, and then carbohydrates such as coloured honey sugar water to keep the ants energized and hydrated. Over the many months, I scaled this setup by adding an additional test tube which they was impressively filling up with more brood, larvae, pupae and work ants literally every month. Campanotus nika branches is renowned for being one of the fastest growing ant species to keep and they really were living up to this reputation. On day 180, I run into the first huge problem. The colony has strangely began to place their pupae on top of the test tubes which is a sign that they were after dry space but also a desperate signal that they need further expansion. This is because each stage of gestation requires different humidity levels. Eggs and larvae often require higher humidity so they don't dehydrate whereas pupae require very low levels so the cocoon doesn't get wet prevents the ant from breaking out when they are fully formed. So I added in some completely dry test tubes for the pupae and then and behold they have moved all the pupae into them overnight. Success! I continued to scale up the colony with consistent feeding and hydration over the next couple of months until there was too many test tubes. At this point I added in their first ever formicariums and then removed each test tube one by one until the colony had fully moved into their new home. Oh no! It looks like a major ant is killing a worker ant. The major is vigorously shaking the hopeless worker ant around in its mandibles. This almost means certain death for this ant. They will all end up eating each other if I don't do something quickly. This could be catastrophic for the colony. So straight away, I add in a bunch of fruit flies to feed the colony's hunger. The colony starts frantically running around, hunting these fruit flies down with utter ferocity. Phew. I can no longer see any ants attacking each other. This was certainly because they needed protein and were willing to go to extreme measures of cannibalism to raise the next generation. Day 400, I have moved house and just started to develop my new ant room. I have moved my table over and set up my Nika colony in the corner with their heat mat and thermostat. The next day I put together an industrial shelving unit ready for my ants to be placed on. At this point the colony is starting to get quite large. Just look at how full these former carriums are with pupae. to develop the setup by adding in more formicariums every month. I have never seen an ant species grow as quick as these do. I can barely keep up with buying new nests all the time. The colony seems to be doubling every other month which is just insane growth. There's that many ants that I also add in another outworld section that takes up another shelf. The next day I notice something strange in the outworld. Everything seems so eerily calm. Out of nowhere I see a spider running around startling the colony. This can only end one way for the spider as it's up against thousands of angry Nikos that will see it as food. I have no idea how it got in here. I often leave the lids off with the ant barrier applied from the inside to allow fresh oxygen flow for the colony. It must have got in there whilst the lids were off. Now, I'm not one to interfere with the natural order. These ants need all the protein they can get. With this being a house spider, there is very low chance that it has came from an outside garden that has been exposed to pesticides, as this chemical can wipe out ants very easily.
The ants begin to hold the spider down by biting down on its leg. This species usually sprays formic acid when defending their home, however I rarely see my colony do this. It could be that in captivity they lack space and no would be detrimental to the colony. I'm not 100% sure though. At this point, the spider is fully clamped down and swarmed by the angry Nikos. The spider has finally submitted. It all seems doom and gloom. However, the ants will feed their next generation with the proteins from the spider, and the cycle of life continues. As you can see though, I'm not kidding with how protein hungry this colony is. Devouring murray worms, mealworms, crickets, locusts, it just doesn't stop. I can give these any type of protein and they will accept it. This is why this species is so successful in the wild. They are absolutely ruthless. They will also drink an immense amount of sugar and honey water to keep the colony energised and hydrated. Carpenter ants are renowned for their love of sugars. I also provide this colony with protein jellies, as sometimes I'm just not quite sure they are getting enough protein. Now they are in the thousands. It is indeed a tough scene to witness, but this is the rule of nature. Without prey there wouldn't be predators, and without neither, life would lack meaning. Without all this protein, the colony resorts back to cannibalism to recycle older or weak ants to feed the brood with instead. The next generation always takes precedence. So going forward, it is paramount that I feed these Nikos every single day. Day 1000. I just can't believe how huge this colony is now. At 6,000 strong, the colony now stretches across two shelves, including six outworlds and nine large formicarians. Whilst randomly checking up on the colony, I come across something amazing. I can see wings. Wow, this colony has hit full maturity and is now producing winged elates. These are new virgin winged queen ants which reside in the nest while the worker ants feed them with a plethora of sustenance. Now to recap, over 1000 days this colony has endured many challenges from expansion pains to cannibalism as they eat each other, to even a spider somehow getting into their enclosure. We have ultimately seen the colony go from one queen and a few workers to a gigantic mature colony of 6000 ants with winged elites. Thank you for watching, but wait, what about this epic ant video next? Please like, comment and subscribe to keep up to date with this colony. I'm sure these will reach 10,000 workers in time to come. And remember, keep chasing your dreams and flicks out.